Direct detection of gravitational waves is tricky for two main reasons. One is that the amplitude of the waves are so small, and the other is that the measuring sticks you might use to measure a change in length are changed themselves. In other words, the changed length will still read out as one meter. But the stretching and squeezing does put a strain on the plate, and that can be measured with an attached wire that acts as a resistor. It's called a strain gauge. If we attach wires along the plate instead of a meter stick, we can measure changes in the resistance of the wire as it is stretched and squeezed. A longer, thinner wire will provide more resistance to an electric current, and a shorter, fatter wire will provide less resistance to an electric current, thus giving us a measure of the strain. Unfortunately, this technique is literally millions of times too insensitive to measure the tiny gravitational wave amplitudes, h. But this technique is why we call h a measure of strain. Michelson interferometers look like the best chance to detect these waves. You recall that we covered the interferometers in the first chapter of this video book. The arms on that one were 11 meters long and its sensitivity was nowhere near what is needed for gravitational waves. Today we have LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. In 2015, it started with two identical interferometers, 3,000 kilometers apart. That's 1,864 miles. With one near Hartford, Washington, and the other near Livingston, Louisiana. Here are the L-shaped LIGO instrument components. It has a powerful near-infrared laser with an output after amplification that reaches 200 watts of 1064 nanometer light. The beam splitter and mirrors that act as test masses are 40 kilogram objects suspended via fused silica glass fibers to minimize noise due to vibrations. Additional internal and external active vibration minimization technologies eliminate the effects of everything from nearby traffic to lunar tidal forces. The 4-kilometer arms are 10,000 cubic centimeters of ultra-high vacuum, equal to one trillionth of an atmosphere. In addition, each arm contains reflective mirrors that route the light back and forth inside the arms 280 times before it hits the exits for recombination. The photo detector is a state-of-the-art indium gallium arsenide photodiode array with a high quantum efficiency designed to detect extremely small amounts of light at a wavelength of 1064 nanometers. The laser light is split and sent to the two mirrors. On return, they are recombined and sent to the photodetector. The beams returning from the two arms are kept out of phase so that when the arms are both in sync as when there is no gravitational wave passing through, their light waves subtract and no light arrives at the photodetector. When a gravitational wave passes through the interferometer, the distance along the arms of the interferometer are shortened and lengthened causing the beams to become slightly out of sync. Hence, some light arrives at the photodetector, indicating a signal. Given LIGO's extra 280 passes through the tube, a gravitational wave strain amplitude of 10 to the minus 21 would displace the mirrors by 10 to the minus 18th meters. That's one thousandth the diameter of a proton. Here's our sensitivity graph, and here's the sensitivity line for the current LIGO capabilities. All gravitational waves with strains below the curve are undetectable. The curve shows that LIGO can detect gravitational waves with wavelengths between 10 to the third and 10 to the ninth meters. With the maximum sensitivity enabling detections with strains as small as 10 to the minus 22, when the wavelengths are between 10 to the 6th and 10 to the 7th meters. This is a range where powerful binary system mergers 
of stellar mass black holes and neutron stars within the Virgo supercluster, our local supercluster, should be detectable.